Now, I'm just going to try and put electrics in the beast tonight and see where it fits and where it doesn't fit. Um, let's start with a speed controller, I think. Or the motor. That's probably the easiest one. Interesting thing with this one, you've got to uh, take this little uh, tiny little hoop there off before you can put the motor in. Otherwise, the um, motor wires get you won't be able to push the motor in deep enough for that. So let's have a look. So that's all kinds of weird stuff going on there. So I'm going to take that bar off and then put the motor in, then put it back later. bit hard to tell from here where who's watching but uh, yeah interesting all right on the plus side with this one you don't have to worry about the uh, spacing out the pinion compared to the old uh, mo3s and fives plenty of access Uh, yes, it can. There's uh, plenty of clearance with a 20 tooth pinion in the uh, hole. Uh, let me see if I can uh, get a close up of this. Let's see how this works out. So, focus at any point. There you go. Plenty of room. That piece there, the, the white gear is exactly the same as the uh, standard uh, MA5 and MA3 one. the brace back on and me being pulled prepared again pinion teching is going to be interesting at a controlled or a big race meeting. Um, gonna have to extract that pinion. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, there's a nice little access hole on the bottom there. Right there. Just gonna do that. There it is. So you can get to the grub screw in there. Or you can uh, try and put another 20 tooth pinion up against that one and count the teeth that way. This little cover comes off quite easily. Um, too easily I think it's probably gonna be a few of those lost unless people start doing something to tape them up or something because they come off quite easily it doesn't take much effort to pull them off now this is gonna be interesting motor wires there steering rod going right over the top of them maybe we need to bring them across that way and try and hold them down Hmm. Let's see where that leads us later on. Alright, let's put that on there before we lose it. Not before I lose it. Um, might as well have a quick look. Someone asked this in the um, video for the last one on YouTube. Fitting the shorty pack. You know, fitting a long pack is not an issue. The long pack goes.
those in, no problem. Plenty of room. Brace goes on underneath. Or the bracket. And there it is. Plenty of room, plenty of access for the spacer, or for the plugs. Now the shorty pack is interesting. There it is, nicely centered. Little snag, can't actually plug the wire in. But apart from that, awesome. The only way around that, that I can see, is to mount it slightly off center and then you can get at them from the side. But um, don't know who'd be wanting to do that. I can get a bit of a closer look and see what happens with this. There we go. There it is. So if we center the battery up, its edges are line up with the uh, side of these bars on the top of the chassis, here and here. So very hard to get a wire in there. You could probably plug something in and then slide the battery in and push it across. Um, you'd still have to find some way to retain the battery in there as well. Um, other than that, yeah, like I said before, push it off to the side and then try and get access to it that way. You can't really cut these bits off because they're part of the chassis and that would be a modification in our racing. Um, you can probably leave those out if you're running a um, shorty pack but uh, it still wouldn't give you too much access under there other than just not being in the way for the wires to come out on the side. So there you go. Next step, let's go with the speed controller. Uh, this is the speed controller I used at the Masters a few weeks ago. So let's uh, fit that back into the car. Or in the car. Slightly different mounting for the uh, MO5. So this speed controller slides in there nicely. So there's plenty of room for it in there. It slides in from the top and you can double sided tape that in, no problem at all. And then you've got the battery leads here and the motor wires here. So everything will fit across there, no problem. Now the trick here is because of where the uh, pass-through holes are under the chassis to get the wires from the speed controller across to the receiver on the other side, if that's how you choose to do it. There are some little access holes underneath um, the servo so you can hide the wires. Um, only snag is the access holes are where you'd want to tape this uh, to the chassis. So you're going to have to put the wire across and then let it sit out a little tiny bit so that there's room for the wire to bend through and go under. So just a little uh, minor design issue, nothing of significance. Um, the only other issue there is this, I'm going to have to extend these wires because the positive on the battery is going to end up over here. Um, again, not a major drama. If I'd mounted this on this side, um, it would get in the way of this uh, servo steering horn. So, it's going to have to go there, and I'm going to have to extend these. If you have a small receiver and you want to do a nice uh, stealth install, there's a nice little gap underneath this part here. 
that you can probably put your small receiver in, probably something like an old Spectrum mini or uh, three channel micro receiver that would fit in there nicely. Um, the Sandmire one is just a little wide. If it was out of the case, I reckon it'd squeeze in no problem. But uh, yeah, not in the case. Now I've got an old uh, servo from another Mini. Uh, it's a 15. Servox 1250, uh, 1251MG with the missing sticker and a very tiny actually this one was out of an old touring car the old Schumacher um, so this will be interesting gonna have to get a little extension for that when I uh, plug it in later doesn't seem to be any adjustability in the servo mounts on these ones on the the 07 compared to the uh, 05 where you had that little bracket that you could uh, put in slightly smaller servos if you wanted to for some reason not that it makes that much of a difference these seem to fit in no problem Still there. Let's see if I can uh, get it close up. I wish this camera would focus. Really wish this thing would focus. There we go. And there it goes. So there's the install. Chevy. Yeah, that wire there. I'm uh, just going to leave it hanging there precariously until I can uh, get my hands on a short uh, extension. Because I reckon I could squeeze it into the receiver, but uh, it's going to put a lot of tension and stress on the wire, and I don't really want to do that. So, receiver. So, and that's probably the perfect spot for that. Ooh, there it is. Focus. And ooh, there it is. So, yeah. These ones, you contra well, my theory, they're body post mounts and stabilizers. It's whether you put the body post stabilizers on the MO5 or not. You probably could. These ones, on the other hand, I reckon, are probably integral to this car. So you might have to hold on to those. So I reckon that would fit in there nicely in that little spot close to the ground just behind the battery if you're really keen you could probably mount it up further but um, or even up here it, it might even work Nice little slot for it in the middle there. It should go through the battery, but yeah, I've got short leads, so that one's going in here. Yeah, that should be able to uh, get a little bit neater. Um, on there. Yeah, as I said, 
that's going to have to be shortened, but other than that, it should be okay. Um, let's try going to the close up. So, that's how that looks in there. It's not too bad uh, for a first go at it. Um, once that's neatened up, it should be a lot neater, or not cleaner. So now I'll just have to uh, take up the slack of the uh, three-foot antenna. So what I tend to do is uh, thread them through the body pole, the post holes here that have been kindly put in and made big enough for uh, this wire to go through. That takes up some of that. Then we feed it back the other way. And there we go. And I'll just probably leave that hanging there. That's what I normally do. It's out of the way. So that's good. Now the one thing we can't put on tonight, because I forgot it when we put the car together, is the steering link, sadly. But um, I'll try it just to check clearance later on um, with uh, an MO51, which is a little bit shorter. About 5mm, maybe a little bit uh, more shorter than this one. Um, because the pickup point on the front is a little bit further forward. So that's most of the electrics in there. some weights of these cars shall we I've got my uh, MO5 V2 that I ran at Geelong a couple of weeks ago with these batteries so let's see what happens let's weigh that one let's assume we use the same body post or body for both cars let's tear that out Thirteen twenty-six without a body and without tape holding the battery in, although I don't think that'll add up to much. Now, one little difference. This one has a uh, bunch of extra weight on the front of the bumper there. There are 15, 30, 40 grams on top of the bumper, plus a little bit more inside. Um, but um, that is still a little bit lighter, which is interesting, but not by much. Uh, there's a lot less alloy on the uh, MO7 than I have on this one. The steering rack, shock mount, 
uh, this system as well is a little heavier. So, but yeah, it's not that much different. And if you want to compare something at home, I'll uh, weigh the battery. You can change it with your own. No, there isn't a lot of place left to put lead. Um, there is a little bit on the t a bit of room in here. Um, under here, I reckon you could get a bit industrious. And um, cut those pieces of foam out and lay some lead in here and that should and that should then hold it in place and it'd be nice and hidden as well um, you could also put some lead up here although you probably don't want to have it all up the top or to raise the center of gravity and um, if you don't put the receiver um, in the back there you can uh, fill that up with lead as well although you probably don't want a lot of weight behind the rear wheels um, unless you uh, really want a lot of steering so yeah a few challenges There's probably not a room, a lot of room for lead under the Savox servo, as um, if you noticed, I had to put the wires in uh, before I put the servo on, um, because when the servo is screwed down, uh, the servo rests on top of the wires there. It doesn't pinch them, but you won't get the plug through, so it's pretty much spot on with the Savox servo. Um, one thing I don't like with it is. Um, I don't know if you can really tell in there, but there's a lot of holes under here that's gonna fill up with dirt and muck. So, yeah. Could pack some of those bits out with lead as well, keep it down low. Um, if you weren't fussed about cooling, you could probably put something under there. And actually, come to think of it, inside the gearbox here, there's, there's a little bit of uh, empty space and dead space. Um, it's a bit hard to show on camera, but there is a bit of space in there for uh, some lead if you really want to. So if I can get in there a little bit closer. Yeah, I'll just you know, weigh this battery first. If you want it so on. Zero. So it's 293 grams, so 1180 minus 293. Add your own battery, and that's pretty close to what you get with similar equipment. Plus the body, of course. Um, all right, so put that out of the way. Let's have a look in here. I don't think the macro feature on this thing is too good, but let's see where we get. Um, close up. So if we can get it to focus. If I can, uh, did that help? Not really. So basically, this whole area behind here uh, to the motor plate and behind here, so you could pack that out with lead in there. Um, there's a little bit underneath the here as well, which. Um, you probably can't see too well. Oh, there you go. That's a little bit. So I'm trying to get the phone light in there, flash. So you can probably see a little bit of that. So turn that off. So yeah, there is a little bit of room there to play with. And it's nicely tucked away. 
only snags if you don't uh, screw or mount it properly with the good double-sided tape and nice clean tape and clean surface area there um, it'll come off and uh, destroy your gearbox but you know chances you take so yeah that's pretty much it I think unless there are any questions um, you could probably put some lead um, uh, in there as well there's a little bit of dead space in here um, you could probably line um, underneath the uh, ESC with a sheet of lead as well get some lead flashing and just cut that out uh, be surprised if they don't make one of these in alloy though um, to hold the hinge pins that would be easily enough to do I think um, if you didn't have a very large battery you could put some lead under the battery as well and that would be nicely centered as well uh, there's a little bit of room in here for someone if they can mill out a uh, brass weight too um, and I guess if you put um, alloy knuckles um, C hubs and whatever else if Tamiya bring them out then that would uh, add a little bit of weight as well but you'd want to try and spread it out over the whole chassis though depending on how much steering you end up with or balance so yeah there you go uh, didn't check the shorty pack with the weight but we can let's have a look if you have a look at the video at the start um, I went over the shorty pack because there's some issues with the shorty pack um, I won't go over it again but um, yeah if you go back and have a look there are some issues with mounting a shorty pack in the thing so if you've got your shorty pack in there uh, you're probably not going to be using these pack uh, these bits um, but we'll put them on just uh, for completeness I've never run a shorty pack in a mini, so I'm not sure how easy it is to put in or not, but this one is not easy um, to make fit if you want it centered. So that's at zero. So with a shorty pack. There you go, 1091, as opposed to 1180 with the other pack. And the pack itself is 205 grams. So, depending on what pack you've got. You can probably work out how much it's going to weigh with it. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it.